Hello and good day. Today we will be talking about ISOTS 14072, or better known as Environmental Management, Life Cycle Assessment, Requirements and Guidelines for Organizational Life Cycle Assessment. Let us start by discussing what is Organizational LCA. Organizational LCA, or OLCA, is a method that evaluates the environmental impacts of an entire organization or corporation across its whole life cycle. It is slightly broader than traditional LCA, which is a thorough approach employed to assess the environmental impacts linked to a product, process, or service across the course of its life. OLCA expands upon this concept at the organizational level. So what is it about OLCA that is so important and what are the benefits of OLCA? Among others, the benefits and importance are that OLCA helps organizations understand their environmental footprint, promotes environmental responsibility, and ensures environmental compliance. OLCA can also identify areas in the organization's life cycle where resource use can be optimized and thus lead to cost savings. It also provides valuable information for strategic decision-making. And lastly, it encourages a culture of innovation and continuous improvement. Not only that, implementing an organizational life cycle assessment can add values to the organizations or corporation. Among others, the values that OLCA can add is sustainability performance improvement and development and implementation of sustainability initiatives by identifying hotspots and areas of high environmental impact. It can also enhance reputation and stakeholder relations by demonstrating a commitment to environmental responsibility through OLCA results and actions. Next, it allows organizations to stay competitive in the market because sustainability becomes an increasingly important factor in consumer and investor decision-making. And finally, it contributes to the long-term resilience of the business by anticipating and adapting to environmental challenges. So, the organization can thrive in a changing business and ecological landscape. What are the differences between OLCA and traditional LCA? Traditional LCA and OLCA differ in their scope, focus, and application and boundaries. Here are some key differences between the two. First, in terms of scope. Traditional LCA focuses on assessing the environmental impacts of a specific product, process, or service from cradle to grave. It considers the entire life cycle of that particular entity. Meanwhile, OLCA expands the scope to assess the environmental impacts associated with the entire organization. It considers the aggregated impacts of all products, processes, and services within the organization, encompassing its entire value chain. Second is the unit of analysis. Traditional LCA analyzes the life cycle of a single product, process, or service. Thus, it is represented by a functional unit FU and a reference flow. Meanwhile, OLCA analyzes the collective impacts of an entire organization, and it is represented by its reporting unit, RU, or reporting organization, RO. Third is the scale. Traditional LCA is typically conducted at a smaller scale, focusing on individual products or processes within the organization. As for OLCA, it is conducted at a broader organizational scale, considering the cumulative impacts of all products, processes, and services. Last but not least, in terms of system boundary. Traditional LCA defines system boundary specific to the product or process being assessed. Therefore, it only addresses one perspective, where only the life cycle of the product is considered. As for OLCA, it defines broader system boundary that encompass all relevant activities of the organization. What are the standards that guide the application of LCA to organizations? As I said in the beginning of this video, it is the ISOTS 14072. It is a technical specifications, or TS, of the International Standards Organization, or ISO, 
that aims to address a gap in the standard methodology for assessing the impacts of the activities of organizations along their life cycles. So, this TS provides additional requirements and guidelines for an effective application of ISO 14040 or Environmental Management, Life Cycle Assessment, Principles and Framework, and ISO 14044, Environmental Management, Life Cycle Assessment, Requirements to Organizations. So, it means that ISO 14040 and ISO 14044 can be used for all of the activities of an organization. Next, how to implement OLCA? Well, LCA and OLCA methodologies are based on the same principles and life cycle thinking framework. The main difference is the object of analysis that is respectively a product or the activities associated with the organization as a whole or portion thereof. That means the two methodologies have the same structure or the same implementation steps consisting of four main phases. First, goal and scope definition. Second, inventory analysis. Third, impact assessment. And fourth, interpretation. For a better visualization, you can refer to this graph. Phase 1. Goal and scope definition. The first step of an OLCA is to describe the goal of the study. Why is an OLCA being conducted? What questions are we trying to answer? Who will use the results? And what do we want to assess? The goal definition must be clearly specified because it is decisive for all the phases of OLCA that follow. Furthermore, in defining the goal of the study, ISOTS 14072 requires to unambiguously state that the results are not intended to be used in comparative assertions intended to be disclosed to the public. An OLCA could be undertaken to, for instance, identify impact reduction opportunities along the value chain, performance tracking over time, or improving knowledge, control, management, and transparency of operations involved in the portfolio provision. The next step is to define what is going to be analyzed and how, that is the scope. In an OLCA study, the scope should be unique and sufficiently well-defined to ensure that the breadth, depth, and detail of the study are compatible and sufficient to address the stated goals. Practitioners should be sure to adequately describe the organization under study, the limits placed on the organization's life cycle, from where the data will be coming and the quality required, how information will be handled, and other scoping decisions. There are elements that needs to be described in scope definition. Those elements are as follows. What is also being discussed in the first phase is reporting flow. The reporting flow is a measure of the outputs of the reporting organization. It is a quantitative amount and constitutes the basis for completing the inventory of OLCA. Reporting flow should answer the questions of what, how much, how well, and how long. The second thing that is also being discussed in the first phase is the system boundary. System boundary sets the limits of the study and includes all the direct and indirect activities. There are some key considerations for establishing a system boundary in OLCA. First is the organization's life cycle. The system boundary should cover all significant activities within the organization's life cycle. For example, raw material, production, distribution, use, and end-of-life processes. Second, the boundary should also consider the entire value chain associated with the organization's products, processes, and services. This involves looking beyond direct operational activities to include suppliers, contractors, and other entities involved in the value creation. Third is upstream and downstream processes. Upstream processes such as raw material extraction, processing, and transportation are essential for understanding the full environmental impact of the organization's inputs and supply chain. 
As for downstream processes such as product use, maintenance, and disposal, helps capture the environmental consequences of the organization's products or services throughout their entire life cycle. Next is the direct and indirect impacts. System boundaries should account for both direct and indirect environmental impacts. Direct impacts are associated with the organization's operations, while indirect impacts may result from activities such as energy production or raw material extraction. And lastly is scope consistency. Boundary should ensure consistency with other organizational assessments, standards, and reporting frameworks. Harmonize the OLCA system boundaries with other sustainability reporting initiatives to provide a comprehensive view of the organization's performance. Moving on is Phase 2, Lifecycle Inventory Analysis. The inventory is the OLCA phase when data is collected, systems are modeled, and lifecycle inventory results are obtained based on the study's goal and scope definition. This should be done iteratively with the other phases of OLCA. For conducting the inventory phase, operational steps in the central column of Figure 1 should be performed. The most time-consuming step in the inventory is data collection. The type of data used, the quality, and the sources used in the study shall be transparently reported. Additionally, data quality requirements and the method selected for handling multifunctionality influence the LCI. The inventory should consist of all inputs and outputs connected with the activities involved in the provision of the reporting flow and considering the system boundary definition. The example of inputs are energy, water, and materials. And the examples of outputs are products, co-products, waste and emissions to air, water, and to soil. For direct activities, the inventory shall include all inputs and outputs. Regarding the value chain, it is recommended to consider all the inputs and outputs from indirect activities that are included in the system boundary. Phase 3 is Impact Assessment The approach to the third phase of OLCA is basically the same as that of Product LCA. Hence, the same requirements and guidelines apply, and the challenges to be addressed are very similar. Once the inventory is compiled, translating the inputs and outputs into environmental impacts should be done with one of the existing impact assessment methods to analyze and assess the potential environmental impacts associated with the inventory data. The examples are Recipe, CML2002, EDIP, and Lime. Common impact categories include climate change, resource depletion, acidification, eutrophication, and human toxicity. Like in product LCA, two obligatory steps are performed, classification and characterization, and it is optional to apply normalization, aggregation, and weighting. Classification means assigning inventory input and output data to a potential environmental impact. As for characterization, it means assigning a relative contribution of each inventory input and output to a selected impact category. Phase 4 is Interpretation. This step is analogous to that of product LCA, meaning that recommendations and requirements for the latter are applicable to the former. Interpretation is the phase of an OLCA in which the findings from the inventory analysis and the impact assessment are considered together. The interpretation phase should indicate the consistency of the results according to all the aspects defined during the goal and scope phase. It is necessary to outline conclusions, explain limitations that have occurred, and provide recommendations. Furthermore, interpretation should involve an iterative process. First, the significant issues are identified according to the inventory and impact results. Second, the methods and results are evaluated for completeness, sensitivity, and consistency. The next step is to draw first conclusions and check that they are consistent with goal and scope. Finally, if the conclusions are consistent, they can be reported. Otherwise, it is necessary to revise the scope of the OLCA, 
improve the quality of data collected and impacts calculated, and return to the first step of the interpretation. Conducting an organizational life cycle assessment involves a series of systematic steps to assess and quantify the environmental impacts associated with an organization's activities across its entire life cycle. So, in general, this is the flow in conducting OLCA. By following these steps, organizations can conduct a comprehensive OLCA that provides valuable insights into their environmental performance and supports informed decision-making for sustainable practices and continuous improvement. It is important to note that the specific details of each step may vary based on the organization's contacts, the nature of its activities, and the available data. Moving on, how to integrate OLCA in corporate management. By integrating OLCA into corporate strategies and management practices, organizations can foster a more sustainable operation, reduce environmental impacts, and gain a competitive advantage in the marketplace. OLCA can be integrated in terms of decision-making. First is by enhancing the insights, because decision-making requires comprehensive knowledge about the entire system in question, OLCA results will allow organization to gain insights into the current environmental risks and impact reduction opportunities and can formulate strong arguments for effective actions to reduce its environmental impacts. Second, forecasting scenarios. A completed OLCA model enables the organization to test the effect of proposed actions or measures using scenarios and forecast the environmental savings or trade-offs between impact categories. Lastly, stimulating data collection efforts. OLCA results identify where additional effort may be required or where further analysis may be necessary to take decisions. Second is setting targets within the organization's environmental strategy. First point, type of targets. Type of targets should be defined as a quantified reduction to be achieved in a target year on the basis of a reference year. Second, recommendations for target setting. Setting global targets for the entire organization and value chain is recommended in order to avoid trade-offs between different activities along the value chain. Setting specific targets for certain activities, products, businesses, divisions, brands, regions, or facilities due to specific circumstances provides additional metrics. It is recommended to define the targets at the impact level, not at the inventory level as indicators like mass or volume do not always reflect the most significant resource use and emissions impacts. Next is integration through environmental performance tracking. OLCA can help maintain consistency. Performance tracking of an organization is defined as the comparison of the performance of the same organization's products and operations over time, based on a consistent reference period system boundary, and reporting organization. Next point is the comparison time period. The typical time period for comparison is one year. Furthermore, a baseline period may be defined if, for example, reduction targets are to be monitored. When the targets and the baseline period are established in the first year that OLCA is applied, they might be considered to be preliminary due to the likely improvements in the approach and data collection in the following iterations. The organization may, therefore, consider the adaptation or replacement of the original baseline in subsequent additions. Next point, managing organizational and data change. Organizations often undergo structural changes such as acquisitions, mergers, outsourcing, and divestments, which can affect the definition of the reporting organization. Lastly, accounting for reporting flow changes. A further challenge for performance tracking is when the reporting flow evolves over time. A portion of the changes in the environmental impact profile may not be a consequence of changes in resource use efficiency and or emissions per unit of product, but due to variations in the reporting flow. 
and an increase in environmental impacts due to an increase in production should be reflected in performance tracking. And this can be helped by OLCA. How can we involve stakeholders in the process of integration? Involving stakeholders in the process of integrating OLCA into corporate management is crucial for obtaining diverse perspectives, fostering collaboration, and ensuring that sustainability goals align with stakeholders' expectations. There are several steps to involve the stakeholders, such as identifying relevant stakeholders, making a stakeholder analysis and map, stakeholder communication and engagement, collaborative goal setting, cross-functional teams, inclusive decision-making, stakeholder consultations, training and capacity building, reporting and transparency, feedback mechanisms to the stakeholders, and recognize the contributions of the stakeholders. Reducing the environmental impact of organizations is a critical goal for sustainable business practices. What are some strategies and best practices to help organizations minimize their environmental footprint? First is to adopt the international standard to establish a robust EMS or environmental management system that provides a framework for identifying, managing, monitoring, and continually improving environmental performance. Second, is to implement eco-friendly transportation practices and optimize logistics to reduce carbon emissions, and also to encourage telecommuting and virtual meetings. Next, is to strive for carbon neutrality by balancing emissions with equivalent carbon removal or offset measures. Next, is to strive for a sustainable Next is to strive for a sustainable supply chain management by evaluating and collaborating with suppliers based on environmental criteria. And lastly, provide training to employees on environmental policies, procedures, and individual responsibilities to foster a culture of environmental awareness and responsibility. Is there any connections between OLCA and sustainability programs? Of course, OLCA empowers organizations to envision their sustainability strategy, steer the design of their products, and improve their processes. Thus, it is also closely tied with sustainability programs. Let's see, OLCA and the United Nations SDGs have a very deep connection as both are tools and frameworks aimed at promoting sustainability and addressing global challenges. OLCA allows organizations to identify environmental aspects and impacts throughout their life cycle. By addressing these impacts, organizations contribute to the achievement of specific SDGs related to environmental sustainability. Also, OLCA is often part of a broader corporate sustainability strategy, or CSR initiatives. OLCA and CSR are interconnected concepts because both are aimed at promoting sustainable practices within organization. OLCA is also closely linked to SDG number 12, which emphasizes responsible consumption and production. OLCA helps organizations optimize their processes, reduce resource consumption, and minimize waste, aligning with the principles of sustainable production and consumption. Success stories are a good way to start our journey in OLCA. Let us take the case of a WD-40 company. WD-40 is an American brand and the trademark of a pen trading oil manufactured by the WD-40 company. They implemented OLCA in 2021. One of the benefits felt by the company is that the OLCA results allowed the company to establish its baseline GHG emissions and go on to conduct scenario modeling studies to look for possible avenues of achieving emission and environmental impact resolutions. It also adds value to the company by guiding the thinking about new alternatives, including evaluation of other plant-based materials for availability, cost and performance, and exploration of additional canned material options. However, they also encountered an obstacle that can be a lesson learned to other companies. The problem is in terms of obtaining upstream data. Obtaining data from their supply chain partners in the blending and filling functions 
was more difficult in some regions than others. The WD company cannot emphasize enough on the importance of the first or preliminary steps in conducting an OLCA. The first steps are identifying relevant activities, principles, and methods. Second, the importance of OLCA to the WD company were foundational for the development of potential strategic actions for impact reduction in WD-40. Having completed the OLCA, WD-40 acquired the analytical tools to properly evaluate their options. Lastly, some things worth noting from the case of WD-40 are setting clear goals and expectations for the analysis are important, it is also crucial to promoting enthusiasm for participation among employees and relevant stakeholders because in WD-40 company, they found enthusiasm for participation among employees with the effort engaging about a dozen volunteers from a global base of about 500 employees who devoted an average of 50 to 250 hours annually. It is also crucial to learn more about the specific data elements required and design a plan for obtaining that information before committing to the project and engaging with an external firm. Lastly, collect the data by ourselves, because it can give us an education that will allow us to better evaluate software platforms we might consider. Next, as civilization advances, so do green technology and innovations. Green technology and innovations can play a significant role in contributing to the implementation of OLCA by addressing environmental concerns and improving sustainability across an organization's processes and products. There are various recent technologies that organizations can leverage to improve sustainability across different aspects of their operations. First is AI and Advanced Analytics. These technologies generate data and insights on the environmental and social impact of a product, service, or process. Digital platforms integrate capabilities, share data, and create transparency and accountability among partners. Frontrunners leverage these capabilities to develop and fine-tune offerings, engage customers, and improve performance over time. IoT and AI-based solutions also optimize energy efficiency in real time, reducing emissions and saving money all at once. Next is Cloud IoT and Blockchain. Advanced digital technologies and tools such as connected IoT sensors and monitors, cloud-based data platforms, and blockchain-enabled tracking system unlock new capabilities for the measurement and tracking of environmental and social impact across value chains. Companies can better improve management and investment decisions and improve their performance against ESG goals. Next is digitized operations. Frontrunners in this area create inherently more sustainable operations and processes. For example, new manufacturing or materials technologies that leverage alternative inputs to reduce emissions and waste, and win consumer and investor reward as a result. Digitized operation also can improve business resilience. Some of the processes and technologies involved even become industry standards. Implementing OLCA can be a complex process, and organizations may encounter various challenges during its implementation. Here are some common challenges faced. First, resource and data availability and quality. There is a lack of accurate and comprehensive data on resource use, emission, and environmental impacts, and this can hinder the implementation of LCA. The concept of OLCA itself is also considered new, so there is only a limited number of literature available. Second is the challenge in defining the scope and the system boundary. Defining the organizational boundaries can be challenging. Deciding what process and activities to be included or to be excluded in the assessment can be subjective and may lead to differing results. Third is choosing the right social indicators and impact categories. Fourth is the challenge in terms of data collection because data collection are time-consuming and expensive. Fifth is the challenge in communicating the results of OLCA. The results of the OLCA are sometimes very complex, therefore it can be difficult for non-experts to interpret and understand. Lastly, there is no OLCA-specific software currently available. 
But that doesn't mean OLCA didn't find any opportunity. OLCA have the opportunity to contribute to the existing academic discussions like those concerning social indicators, data collection, data analysis, and the development of database tools. It can also contribute to the identification of efficiency gains. OLCA can also be integrated with corporate social responsibility initiatives, and it can also promote supply chain optimization. Overcoming these challenges requires a strategic and committed approach. Organizations may benefit from seeking external expertise, establishing clear communication channels, and continuously improving their LCA processes based on feedback and also experience. Yes, the implementation of OLCA can raise ethical considerations and issues. Some key and prominent ethical concerns associated with OLCA is about social and human rights impacts. Organization social and human rights impacts may be highlighted using OLCA. Addressing labor conditions, human rights violations, and community dislocation are ethical issues. Organizations should reduce negative social impacts and promote positive contributions. The next issue is about greenwashing. Misleading or exaggerating the positive environmental aspects of organizational activities, known as greenwashing, is an ethical concern. Organizations should ensure that their communication about environmental performance accurately reflects the results of the OLCA and avoids deceptive practices. Last but not least, it's about data privacy and confidentiality. OLCA involves collecting and analyzing a significant amount of data, including information about the organization's processes, resource use, and emissions. Ensuring the privacy and confidentiality of sensitive data is crucial to prevent unauthorized access or misuse. That is all for today's topic. I hope that this video introduces you to OLCA in a proper manner. See you on the next video.